With energy prices rising in 2025, if you own solar panels and home battery storage or an electric vehicle, you will need to consider which tariff changes could affect you. In this video, I'll look specifically at the Eon Next Drive tariff that I'm currently on, shed some light on Eon's upcoming solar and battery tariff, and what I plan to do now and why. If you're with a different supplier like Octopus for electricity, or even if you're already with Eon, you'll definitely want to stick around for this video. Let's jump into it. I'm currently on the Eon Next Drive V4 tariff, but as you may well be aware, there's a new version, V5, that came out in early December 2024, which states, to be eligible, you must own or lease an electric vehicle and must pay by direct debit. This eligibility criteria is new and was not a prerequisite of the V4 tariff. This was further clarified by a member of this excellent Eon Next Drive Facebook group, and I'll drop a link to this in the video description. When they contacted Eon, they advised that a specific solar and battery tariff is on its way imminently. But in the meantime, they will continue to allow solar and battery users without an electric vehicle to sign up to the next drive V5 tariff. This was back in the first week of December 2024, and to date, no solar and battery tariff has been released. I emailed Eon a couple of weeks ago to see if they had any further details to offer such as an actual release date or tariff rates. Unsurprisingly, they didn't have or want to give me that information. However, these next Solar Boost tariff terms and conditions have appeared on their website. There are no major headlines here, like the release date or the rates, but what do we know? Well, like the next drive tariff, it is fixed for 12 months. You'll need a solar battery storage system, a compatible smart meter capable of supplying half hourly consumption data, and pay by direct debit. There will be two off-peak periods between 1am and 5am and 1pm and 3pm, so six hours of off-peak rates in total. And finally, there are no exit fees, but this may well change again. I'm 99% sure these off-peak import rates won't be anything near as good as the 6.7p per kilo hour on the next drive tariff, and there are less of them. The afternoon import rate between 1pm and 3pm may be beneficial for some, but as a net exporter, we often export during that period anyway, especially during the summer. And in the winter, we can usually make our 8.2 kWh battery last the whole day without running out, with the exception of Christmas Day of course. Well, I'm sure you're all screaming the same thing I was looking at this. What about the export periods and rates? The fact that it doesn't even mention them under the next solar boost tariff isn't promising and suggests to me that you might just continue on your current export tariff rather than it being an import and export tariff like Octopus Flux. So what am I going to do and what should you consider doing now? Well, it's a bit of a crystal ball moment, but with the price of NG predicted to go up this year, I've requested to be moved from the next drive V4 tariff to the V5 tariff via email. The reason for doing this is the peak and off-peak unit rates and standing charge for the V4 and V5 versions are exactly the same and I'll therefore be locking in these rates on V5 for another 12 months. Furthermore, there is no exit fee for leaving V4 to go to V5, and V5 has no exit fee either, so there is no downside to this. The only issue is leaving it long enough so you get the greatest benefit without waiting too long and missing the boat, if they bring out a less favourable V6 tariff in the interim, which will supersede and mean you can't join the V5 tariff. Export remains the same with the next export exclusive V2 with a fixed export rate of 16.5p per kilo hour. Again, this is fixed for 12 months. If you've got solar and battery storage, but no EV, I would seriously consider switching onto the next drive V5 tariff to lock in those rates for another 12 months. I might be wrong, but as I've said, I can't see the new solar and battery tariff that Eon are going to unveil being more attractive than the next drive tariff overall. But if it is, you can always jump onto that with no exit fees. If you've got a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or e-bike, you will be eligible for the next drive tariff, as this would count as an electric vehicle, and there is nothing that excludes you in the wording in the terms and conditions. Note that your IHD won't work on these smart tariffs. You can use the Eon app, but it isn't the best, and it may be that you choose to use a third-party app such as Bright or Hugo to keep up with your consumption data. Interestingly, my Octopus Home Mini has started feeding electricity data back into my Octopus app recently, which is pretty useful. Although I have to admit, I did check I wasn't being billed for both. If you have a gas supply that is on an Eon tariff, you want to check the rates for the different versions and make it clear that you're just asking for your electricity to be moved, as gas tariffs are generally higher than what they have been. 
Just a quick plea, if you're part of the 97% of viewers who watch my content that aren't subscribed, then please do. It's free and only takes a second to click subscribe along with the like button. It really helps keep the channel growing and notifies you of other videos just like this, which may well save you a bit of money. If you're currently with another supplier, it is well worth seeing if you might be better off on the Eon Next Drive tariff. For those of you who have watched my channel for some time now, you know I like to look at the numbers before making any hasty decisions, and I've put together this spreadsheet, which you can download via the link in the video description, to work out your own savings for different import and export tariffs. If after running your numbers, the savings to be had are worth your time and effort switching, then consider using the channel's referral link to split £100, which I'll also drop in the video description box below. I had previously been passing on an extra £20 to those of you who use the link, but the Eon referral credit processes are slow, frustrating, and nothing compared to Octopus. And whilst we've got there in the end for most, it has taken quite a bit of time chasing these up with Eon. I've since ended this offer on the 10th of January 2025 to new signups. If you signed up before this date, the extra 20 offer will still apply. Thank you to those of you who have already used the link and supported the channel. Reassuringly though, I've had no issues with billing. I've received an import statement at the beginning of each month, and my export paid within a couple of weeks every quarter, and I'm achieving over 98% off peak electricity consumption, resulting in an average of just over 7p per kilo hour of electricity, and saving loads on my electricity bills each month. If you're concerned about switching to Eon, I know I was. I recorded this video documenting my journey with the switch, and this video a few months later with an update. Safe to say I'm still with Eon seven to eight months on, and have no issues apart from the extra admin I've mentioned with the referrals. I don't work for Eon and I've even considered switching away from them to Tomato Energy. However, the savings seen in my spreadsheet were not worth the admin headache. It would have been to have my gas with Octopus, electricity import with Tomato, and export with Scottish Power. I'm not singling out Octopus Energy here, and I'd move to them again in an instant if the numbers worked, as I love their ethos, customer service, and they do great things for the wider community like supplying football kits to grassroots football, including my son Isaac's team. Eon just don't give me that warm fuzzy feeling inside that Octopus does. But as a consumer with a young family and other financial pressures, I need to look at the cost along the way. We couldn't access the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff because of the electric car and dumb car charger we had. And if it wasn't for the Eon Next Drive tariff, the financials wouldn't have allowed us to move on from our PHEV to a fully electric vehicle last year helping to reduce our carbon footprint. As I say, I'm constantly reassessing things, and if one day I have a smart charger or heat pump installed, I will probably switch back to Octopus onto a tariff like Intelligent Octopus Go or Cozy to benefit from those rates and accessible time slots. I've obviously kept an eye on Octopus NG's tariffs for several years, and the changes more recently. In April, July, and October 2024, the tariff rates changed, which I've discussed in my previous videos, so I won't go over that again. My point is, and I wonder with energy prices increasing this year, whether Octopus may well change their tariff prices again in April or later in the year. As I say, it's crystal ball stuff, but it's happened before. If you do switch your electricity supplier to Eon, you can leave your gas supply with your existing supplier. And that's exactly what I did. I left my gas on the Octopus Tracker December 2023 V1, which came to an end recently. The new December 2024 V1 Tracker formula isn't as good and I've decided to fix with Octopus for 12 months at 6.1p per kilo hour. The best Eon could offer me was 6.26p per kilo hour. It kind of gives me the best of both worlds, and I don't have to feel so guilty about taking my electricity supply away from the company that got me into mindful consumption, green energy, and carbon reduction in the first place. I suspect in the summer months the price of the tracker will be cheaper than my fix, but I can easily dial down my gas use by heating my hot water via electric immersions, given the price of the off-peak electricity on the next drive tariff, and the heating will be off even in the cold northeast. So those are my thoughts on it all, just in case you're sitting on the fence wondering what to do next. But do you agree? Let me know what you're going to do and how you're making the financials work for you in the comments section below. And if you do have an electric vehicle, you'll definitely want to watch this video next. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.